Hi everyone, this is Generation Schools Network. My name is Rebecca Flores and I am with uh, Gina and Amanda's behind us, but a uh, welcome. I'm excited to have you guys. I'm gonna pass it over to Gina. Hi, I'm Gina with Generation Schools Network and we are super excited to be here today with Paul Hasty. Um, we are at Ames Community College in Greeley at the Welding Technology Facility. Paul? Welcome to Ames. Again, my name is Paul Hasty, and I'll be providing a brief discussion and explanation of our program as well as a tour of our facility today. So, Okay, so we would love to get started in having you explain to us a little bit about the program. Okay, very good. So I, I guess maybe a, a place to start just a little bit before we get into the program is just maybe welding to just before I start discussing the details of the program, just a brief overview of maybe some of the career opportunities in welding and sort of how our field works. Um, so welding is very popular um, today, like, like our programs here at Booming have been for a long time. And the reason why is there's a lot of opportunities um, in welding. Okay, welding is a very broad, diverse field. It's used in many different ways. It's the most common way uh, and best way, most cost-effective way to permanently join metals. Um, so it's used in all kinds of different fields. Um, a lot of goods and equipment are manufactured from metals and welding. All that equipment has to be repaired. Um, you have custom fabrication shops that make custom materials and, and, and uh, items for people um, and businesses, um, oil field, energy sector. So welding is used all over the place in many different ways. Um, and that leads to a lot of opportunities for students. So a lot of our students that go through here um, they're looking to make welding their career, you know, welding eight hours a day, which actually would be low. <laughs> Most of the time in our field, we're looking at 40 plus hours a week, sometimes 50 or 60 hours a week. So lots of lots of time in our uh, per week in our field, typically. Um, um, but what but they've also might look to use welding uh, to enhance other skills that they might have um, or other career areas or other skills that they might already have. So for example, you can be a welder, that is your job, but mechanic, machining, all kinds of industrial fields also use welding um, as a tool in those fields. Um, so many of our students are using this to enhance something that they already do. So one of the things about welding then, because it's used so broadly, is that there's always a need for welders. Sometimes certain parts of our industry go up and down, like say oil and gas energy, um, sometimes that's really booming. Sometimes that drops off fairly low, depending on the economy and what's happening in our area. But there's always a consistent need for welders because of, again, the broad, diverse ways that welding is used. Um, I would say on average, uh, career opportunities, uh, as far as what you might look to, to make in the welding field. Um, most of our students, when they're starting out from school with little or no experience in the field, just education, um, are probably looking somewhere around the high teens, so maybe 18 to 19 dollars an hour to the low 20s to start. That's a pretty average range right now. With experience, um, several years of experience in the field, I would say the 20 to 25 dollar an hour range is, is probably more common. And then as you get more highly skilled or specialized, um, sometimes we see hourly rates 30 plus an hour. If you decide to make your own or create your own business, those rates can even go up higher. So we have students, uh, past students that come back in business that are very successful in the oil field, things like that are making six figures in welding, but they have their own businesses. So that's just a quick overview of, of maybe our industry as a whole. Um, in regard to the program, our program is designed really to provide instruction and education um, and skill sets on the most common uh, welding processes used in the field. There's many different ways that we can join metals or weld them, um, but there's really a core group of processes that when people think of welders or see people welding, really make up the bulk of the industry. And these are processes that we do manually. So it's a skill that we use with our hands. There's also a lot of automation in the field too. So robots, that type of thing. Um, but primarily what we focus on here is gonna be that core skill set um, that really requires manual welding. Okay, so the way our program is structured, we have a two-year degree program. That's an Associate of Applied Science degree. Okay, um, and we also have a certificate program. Basically, they're the same thing in regard to the welding portion. You take the same classes. 
just that if you want to turn that certificate into a degree, you have to add general education. So there's an additional 15 credits of math, um, English, science, communication, et cetera, um, to really turn that certificate into the degree. So many of our students who don't want to go through those extra general education credits just go with the certificate, um, but it doesn't take much more effort to, to go ahead and turn that into a degree. Initially, employers, um, I get that question a lot, what, what's better? I think in the long term, a degree is better. I think it provides some additional skill sets that will help a person when they start to, you know, maybe work through the industry and start to get into management levels, you know, where they have to supervise people. I think the degree is more applicable to that. Um, but initially breaking out into the welding field, employers don't really seem to, to really prefer one over the other, I guess, overall. Um, what they really want to see is that people completed the program. You know, I think it means a lot to employers to show or to see that a student started and then finished something and saw it all the way through. There's some dedication to that, okay? Um, so our program, the degree program and the certificate program are approximately just over a year and a half to two years, depending on how your schedule works out to go through the entire program. Um, in the welding side, where we typically start is with safety. Safety is the first thing out of the gate. We have to get through our safety class and, and safety instruction before we can ever get out into the shop. Um, safety is paramount in our industry. Welding can be a very hazardous field if we don't follow the proper safety protocols. We can get injured very quickly, or we can have long-term consequences from not taking care of ourselves. For example, exposure to fumes and dusts and things like that. So we start out with safety. Um, then we get right into hands-on right away. So our, our safety class is an online class. Um, our first night is, a, is an orientation to the program. But after that, we're right out into the shop, uh, welding and cutting. We start out, our program begins with cutting. So cutting metals rather than welding them together, okay? Um, most of the time as a welder, what you're going to have to do is you'll get a blueprint or on something to fabricate, and you're gonna have to cut and fit those parts. Many times we start out with raw materials, um, like lengths of tubing or pipe or sheets of metal that have to be cut and shaped and formed into the individual components that we're gonna to join together. So cutting is a foundational part of welding. And we start there because it's used throughout all the rest of our classes, okay? After the cutting class, Students then go into what we call shielded metal arc welding, which is referred to often in the field as stick welding. This is a type of process um, that is used a lot outdoors. It's a very portable process. So a lot of times if you see a welding truck, you know, somebody doing portable repairs, working out welding pipe in the oil field, um, doing repairs on heavy equipment, that's typically this process. It lends itself very well to being portable, um, it can be used in a shop environment inside, but it's just not as effective in that environment. So it's typically used outside, um, but still why very widely used good portion of welding is completed with this particular process. Um, after there's two classes on shielded metal arc welding. Um, and then we move into what people refer to as MIG typically or wire feed. Okay. This group of processes uses a coil of wire um, that we end up energizing. We use electricity in all of these processes, actually, to create an electric arc, so to generate heat to melt these metals. Um, and with wire feed welding, we have a spool of wire that feeds continuously. Um, so with this process, it's very efficient um, because we can keep welding as long as we have that spool of wire um, going, or as long as we have metal on that spool of wire. So we can weld very quickly, very efficiently with this, with this process. And that's what's most widely used in the industry because of its efficiency. So we actually spend three classes learning the various wire feed applications, right? Then we get into a process called TIG welding or gas tungsten arc welding. This is a very slow manual process, but usually provides the highest quality and highest uh, quality as far as aesthetics and soundness in welds. Um, it's just very slow. So in industry, a lot of businesses don't use it if they can utilize a process that welds quicker, that provides more efficiency. So this process is used for really high-end applications, typically welding aluminum, stainless steel, 
um, and high-end pipe applications. Um, after, after we get past TIG welding, that's the core group of processes. Uh, the stick welding or shield metal arc welding, MIG or gas metal arc welding, um, and TIG welding or gas tungsten arc welding. Once the students have learned these processes along with the cutting processes, now we start to, to apply them more to different applications. So after that, we get into pipe welding. So up until this point, we've been pretty much welding on flat plates, welding various joints together with flat materials. When we get into pipe welding, now we're working with pipe or, or a round object, right? Which makes it much more difficult to weld, um, having to work around that circumference. Okay, um, welding in a straight line, hand-eye coordination wise is much easier than trying to work around something. And that's one of the reasons why pipe welding is sort of a, a, a higher application. And pipe welders typically make a lot more money because you have to have a higher degree of skill to really do well in the pipe field. Um, but we're applying these same processes we've learned now just to pipe welding. And then finally, we finish out our program with fabrication. So actually creating something. Um, what we, what we do with the fabrication class is the students fabricate a fire pit, and then that fire pit is something that they get to keep. Um, it becomes theirs at the end of the class. But with the fabrication class, we're applying these same um, um, processes that we've already learned, but now we learn how to use some various shop equipment. So how to cut the metal with band saws, shears, punches that punch holes in metal. Uh, we have tools that form and bend metal or roll and shape metal. So the students start out with a blueprint and they have to read that blueprint, get the raw materials and utilize all these different uh, manual processes in the shop to fabricate the individual parts, which we then weld together. Because okay? in the welding field, um, you typically, for most jobs, you're gonna have to not just weld, you're gonna have to have a wide range of skill sets that include all this fabrication. So that's what we're, we're trying to accomplish with this, is tying everything together that we've learned and actually creating a usable, workable item. And, and then finally, our very last class is what we call Capstone, and it's also a fabrication project. It's designed to take everything we've learned throughout the whole program and put it into one final project. What we fabricate in this class is a pressure vessel. It is a small little, a little sort of almost a tank made up of plate and pipe. Um, and it takes a student a full five weeks, which is a full class session, to weld this thing and, and fabricate it. And when they're done, we fill it with water and we hydro test it. So to hold pressure, um, minimum of 250 pounds, but we take it up to 1,000 pounds per square inch. And that is the final class project uh, for these students. And they, they have to make it leak free. They have to do a good job on this in order to pass the class and complete our program. So, wow. That's just a quick overview. Um, I guess, where do we want to go from here with questions or? Sure. A quick question um, for now would be, what are there any prerequisites before entering either the degree program or the certificate? No, not at this point. I mean, we, we highly recommend that you have good skills, at least good basic skills in math, English and reading. We, um, in all of our classes, there are not just, it's not just hands-on. We have written assignments which are comprised of, we do quite a bit of math in here and lots of reading, lots of technical reading. So you wanna make sure you're solid in those skill sets for entering welding. Mm -hmm. um, probably to the level of, at least with our math, um, good basic algebra skills. We deal a lot with fractions, we deal a lot with decimals, and so we have to be able to work with fractions and decimals and basic algebra. And then our reading can be fairly technical. Um, so good, solid reading skills are, are pretty much a necessity for us. Although there's no prerequisites, you can join the program. I just think if you want to have the highest assurance of success, that you should really make sure those skills are good before you enter the program. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. All right. We can move on. Okay. All right, uh, do, do we want to go over any of these questions first or would you prefer to do the shop tour? We can do that, we can start with the shop tour. Okay, so let's let's walk around our facility. So a little bit about, um, about Ames and our welding program here. Ames Community College has been around since 1967 and the welding program has been here with the college since 1969. So uh, over 50 years now uh, that we've had a continuous welding program. Right now we're on the Greeley campus um, and we also have welding 
on the Fort Lupton campus. So we have two different campuses that offer welding and they both offer full complete programs. Okay, we have day programs and night as well. So students can attend day or night. And we're actually just this, well, as a matter of fact, this coming semester starting in January, we'll have a weekend program as well on the Greeley campus. And then next fall in August, we'll also open up a weekend program in Fort Lupton. So there'll be plenty of options for students as, you know, de on, depending on your schedule and your availability to try and meet your, your needs, okay? Um, our program is structured, by the way, typically in five-week blocks. So a semester is 15 weeks in length, and students will take three five-week classes, which equal up to 12 credits, which is considered full-time each five-week block as they work through the program. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, so right now we're in our one of our classrooms. We have two classrooms on the Greeley campus, both the same size and capabilities. Um, nothing probably too exciting here. It's a classroom, but classroom is a classroom. We'll get into the shop here in a minute and uh, show you that. We have about approximately 25,000 square feet of space here. Fort Lupton campus is slightly smaller, um, somewhere between 15 and 20,000 square feet of space down there. Both programs have the same capabilities though. Okay. All right, follow me. Okay, I'm gonna walk this direction. We're just on the outside of our welding lab at this point. If you uh, pan to your left here, You'll see the entrance to welding. So welding is located in a building called Applied Technology and Trade Center. We're just one component of that building. We sort of take up the western end of it. We have other trade programs in this building that we share the building with as well. Okay, we're entering our main shop space. Okay. So if you pan around, you'll see we have a shop office here, just a little shop office for the instructors. And then as you look on the outside walls, you pan around, you'll see individual welding booths. We have 40 arc welding booths. And when I say arc welding booths, that means all the various processes I previously talked about, but they all use electricity to generate the heat to melt metals and to join metals. Okay, so when we're welding, we're always melting the materials. We're, great. we're using heat uh, to melt the base metals. Um, depending on what classes the students are in throughout the program, they'll be in various booths. And we can switch these booths around to different processes at any time. But typically, a student is going to have their own work area or space in a class. So it's their individual booth for that class period. Oh, I'm sorry. Exactly. So you see, like we this in this particular booth, we have a welding machine. This is a shield of metal arc welder. This is a stick welder. Um, sort of a small machine, but it's, it's actually very powerful. Um, depending on the brands and models of the machines that we have, they can be very small or big, have different interfaces, so different controls, things like that on them. Um, there's a lot of variability on these machines between manufacturers on how they appear or set up, but they all perform or function similarly. Um, ventilation systems are in our booth. So we'll say again, safety is a big part of what we do. We're generating a lot of fume. It could be hazardous. So every booth has a, a ventilation component in it that can be moved around, positioned, so the student can withdraw the fume and smoke from their area. These tables and stands, um, can be adjusted. What, the, what we're doing is we're, we're using these components to hold pieces of metal in various positions so that we can weld them, okay? And we're welding, we're focusing on a, on a lot of positions. So we start out welding flat. Flat is the easiest position, right? But then we start to weld vertical, horizontal, and overhead. And as we move out of a flat position, it gets more and more challenging to control the weld beads. Um, and also comfort becomes an issue too. So we work basically from sort of the beginning flat level up through the difficult positions all the way to overhead with all of the different types of welding. And in our program, we'll, we'll weld steel, stainless steel and aluminum, which are the most common metals that are typically fabricated. 
I can see over here what looks like some mathematical equations or some instructions. Right. So in all of our booths, we have chalkboards and the students use this for notes for what they're doing. Um, it could be settings. It could be techniques um, or sequences of welds. So the students are allowed to use these. Again, each booth is sort of their booth for at least that class period. Um, so, and we highly recommend that students either use this or usually little flip pads. We want our students to take notes during demonstrations, things like this, so that they're able to track um, their progress as well as write down important information that they'll have to continue to rely on. So note taking um, is very important to us and to our students. And, and basically all these moves look the same, they're just various equipment inside of it. So follow me, we'll just walk this direction. As you can to your right, you'll see here, this is our center prep room. Matter of fact, let's just go in there. I'll show you some equipment in there as well. So this area is for metal prep. So as I mentioned earlier with cutting, for example, and, and having to shape and form pieces into the right dimensions to be able to go out and, and the boost and weld, this is where all that happens. So we're cutting in here. We're also cleaning metals. We grind metals. So this is where all that stuff get, gets prepared. So the stations you're looking at right here, this is an oxyacetylene torch cutting station. So oxyacetylene, oxygen, and acetylene, those are two gases that we mix together. You can see the hoses here that come into the torch. We mix these gases together that creates a very intense flame that we can then cut metals with, right? Um, over here, this is also another cutting station. This particular station, instead of using gases to create a flame, this is called a plasma cutter. So this elects, uh, uses electricity to create an arc an electric arc, so a really intense, hot a ball of gas, basically an arc is, is, is a form of plasma. So it's a superheated gas um, that will melt the metal instantly and blow right through it. So this is just an electric method of cutting versus using the gases. And okay? both are very common in our field. And then as we move on over here, um, this is another torch, just that this one is automated. This is what we refer to as a track torch. So rather than using uh, this by hand, like the other stations over there, this one we set up and it runs on a carriage. We can control the speed and provide very precise fine cuts. All right. Let's see. And then the rest of these tools, we use wire wheels. So here's a wire wheel. This is used to clean the surfaces of metals. We have grinding stations. So grinding is metal removal. To, to finish out a surface or to shape a surface into a certain shape, we grind the materials. This is a, sometimes what we do after we cut something, we might need to grind and clean up the surfaces. And then we have grinding stations and work tables over here. So all the, you, you'll prepare all your materials here, take out in the booths for welding. Let's see here, follow me really quick. I think I have some examples of some wells that you can look at. We try and visualize some of the things we do in our program. Okay, these are little uh, stands that sort of demonstrate different positions um, as well as different types of wells. So these here, this is made out of 316 steel plate. And we refer to the type of joint or type of weld you put in here as a fillet weld. So this is a T joint. And the type of weld that we, we would put in this joint, we put filler metal. We'd melt down that wire, that stick rod in here to bond these two together. This would be called a fillet because the shape of the joint is such that we form an angle between the two plates. And this would be an example of what we consider a horizontal or flat position. Okay, so we'd start out by welding in the joint like this, okay? When we rotate that same piece 45 degrees, we can see we don't have a flat shelf that helps us, like here in the flat position, that flat shelf allows the, the weld beads that we put in here to rest there, which makes it easier. In this position, this would be considered a horizontal modified position. We've rotated the piece, so now the students have to complete the welds in here and build this out and there's really nothing there to help support it. So we have to exercise a little bit more control with the welding process. This would be an example of a vertical weld. 
going up and down, working in a plane like this. And then finally, overhead, where we might weld under the joint like this in this position. So again, these will be referred to as fillets. If you look here, the next stand, these are what we call groove welds, okay? Um, and the plates come together on the same plane. They're, they're level with one another. They're not forming an angle. They're forming an open gap or groove, okay? And again, we do these in the different positions. These ones will actually bend um, when we test them. Uh, we'll bend the face. So we'll cut them into strips and we'll bend the face. And then we'll also bend the backside. Um, you can't really see here. Let me rotate this around. So there's the backside of the joint, and we'll bend that direction as well. Okay, so you notice on the back, very thin groove, very thin spot. And then as we turn here, we've cut this into a V shape that we build all that out with weld metal to join those two plates permanently together. Okay, and then to test their strength, we bend them. That's often what happens um, in the welding field. You hear a lot about being a certified welder. Certified welders have to go through various tests depending on what they're doing. And typically it results in welding groove welds like this and having those groove welds bent to prove the soundness of the weld. So in our program, we're trying to emulate what, what's out in the industry and try and prepare students for certification tests, things that they're gonna experience when they get out on the job. And then moving over to our left a little bit, here's a good example of bend tests. So here's a piece of pipe that's been welded. Okay, you can see these nice weld beads. That started out as a V-groove, just like these. Same as the plates, but now we're dealing with a piece of pipes we're working around, okay? And we end up filling that all out with weld. And you can see that on this example right here. This is called the cap, okay? So that's the, the finished part. That's the final passes that go on the pipe. And on the inside of the pipe, that's called the root of the joint which is same thing here. When we, when we looked at these plates, you can see at the very back here, that thin area, it's the same on this pipe. And we have to weld it just from one side. We're welding it from the outside here. And we have to fuse and get metal to the inside and completely melt those edges. So that's the root. Okay, and then we fill out the thickness of the plate till we finally get to the top. And then we run weld on top to create the final pass called the cap. And then these pieces here, have all been cut out of this pipe. So that's why there's portions of the pipe missing. These are the pieces that were cut out of the pipe that were then ground down and bent. And you can see, I don't know if you can get a good visual of that, but there's, you know, the, it's very smooth. There's no cracks, no openings in that. Um, so that these straps, bend straps from this plate pass the test. Okay. And this is an example of what we call a tensile pull, which is another test that often happens with when we're tr trying to develop what we call welding procedures for new processes or, or new uh, applications that we're welding with on in a shop. Is sometimes we have to cut strips out and send them off, and they put them in a special machine. They machine them down to a certain size, and then they pull them apart until they break. And the idea is to test strength and soundness of the metal by measuring that when they actually go and they have to meet certain standards. If they fail too early, they don't have the strength that's required, then, then we'll have to start over and keep working on our process until we're able to tune our variables and all the, all the things that we're doing on that particular weld to get a quality weld. So it's a way that we keep testing ourselves. And if we can't meet the standards, we have to keep either practicing or refining what we're doing until we get welds that are of sound quality. That's that's how all the stuff that's welded in the world holds together is through testing and continuous improvement, basically. And testing helps us assure quality on like a skyscraper or a bridge. You don't want something like that falling down. So that is why we do all of that. Okay. Perfect. All right, um, let's continue. So our shop basically here is a big square, a rectangle, okay? Um, and all the booths just go around the outside walls, all of our art building booths and the center preps in the area. We have one more part of our shop that I'm going to show you now. That's the fabrication area. And one of you guys, I, I, they're, they're cutting down there. 
Um, we, we do have any stop it. And also, we think they have um, the technologies of practice and we just want to have to do all this stuff to see if we can tell them yes. Okay. Um, I'm just having uh, my other instructors here go down. Right now, somebody's working in the fabrication shop. So I hear the noise and we want to make sure that they shut that down before we go down there. So we'll start walking that way. Wait for the second here. I, I, I heard we stopped making new so let's call let's go this to wrap down. Well, it's a little more noisy down here. We have to ventilate. Okay, so this is our fabrication shop. This is where uh, we actually start to build and create stuff. Up there, we're welding on what we call coupons, which were the fillet welds, the plate joints, the pipe joints that I was showing you before, okay? Now we're trying to actually fabricate real world items and projects down here. So um, I'll show you some of our equipment. So this here is a bandsaw, okay? This is used to cut metal. You might want to walk around the side. It's called a bandsaw because we use this band of steel here that has teeth on it. Um, once we turn this on, that band is going to continue around in a continuous loop. And then this will come down on top of our material we're trying to cut and cut through the material. Very precise, precise accurate cuts with this equipment. Okay? Very common in a fab shop. This item over here is called an iron worker. It is sort of the Swiss army knife uh, of tools in a fabrication job because it can perform many different functions, okay? So this is a hydraulically operated machine tool. And what we use it for is cutting and shearing and punching holes and bending and forming metal. So on this end, what we call a nibbler, this arm will come up and down and we could notch out or cut shapes with this end of the tool. In the middle of the tool, we have a shear. So it's like a pair of scissors. Um, it's sort of hidden behind this bar. This is anything in yellow here tells us that we have moving parts and our hands should be to this side of it so we don't hurt ourselves. But we have a we, we have a big set of knives on the back of this. Uh, this arm comes up and down. And so we'll measure our material out, slide it through, and have the arm cut through the seal, just like a pair of scissors. And then on this far end, right now, this is set up to punch holes. So you can see you have a punch and a die. We'll put material in here. This arm will come down, and this will punch a hole right through the material. It's very quick as compared to drilling holes. So if we have to create a lot of holes, we can do it very fast with this. Um, but the great part about this part of the machine is that we can change attachments. We have different types of tools that can go on this machine. Um, so like I said, we can bend and form material. We can um, miter tubing, round tubing or pipe. So we can saddle or cut a, a arc shape in pipe so that they fit together. So that's what makes this tool so useful is we can change out the tooling and complete different operations with it, okay? All right, so here. Another bandsaw, just a lot bigger one than the one we first looked at. Another saw, we do a lot of sawing. This is referred to as a fold saw. I don't know if you can see that. It looks like a lot like a circular saw that you've used to cut wood, just that this one is designed to cut metal. Um, as you can tell, cutting, whether it's up there with torches or a plasma cutter or with tools down here is very important to everything that we do. Um, and a lot of success that comes in welding and fabrication happens here. Um, it's the preparation, it's, it's the prep work. If we do this part wrong, then things don't go together right and we can't weld them as well. Things aren't square and true. 
Uh, we have materials of varying lengths. We have tolerances or specifications that we have to stay within to make sure that as we fabricate um, the, out, the project outcome is successful. And it all starts here. Many times people want to rush this part. Sometimes it's the boring part. We want to get to welding and using our hands and you know throwing sparks and things like that. But really, I always tell people that most of my success in welding comes from the prep work and preparing my pieces in advance. The better I do there, the easier my job as a welder is going to be. All right, over here, uh, this is called a slip roll or a roll. We'll put metal in here. This is a hydraulically powered machine. And this will form materials into round shapes. You can make cylinders, you can make cones out of this right here. This is a plate shear. Um, I mentioned shearing on the iron worker where we cut metal, uh, just like, a, like we would paper with a, a pair of scissors. This is a much larger version of that, okay? Um, and it's more precise. The iron worker is for small pieces that we're manually aligning. This tool here is a production plate shear. So this has a big blade that goes up and down. We'll walk around the back of the and I'll show you. And it cuts material, but very precisely, very quickly. This has a 10 foot bed on it. And we can cut a piece of metal, piece of steel, I should say, up to a quarter inch thick. So about that thick, we can cut a full length of 10, uh, 10 feet all in one chop with this machine. Um, so this is sort of a heavy duty plate shear that we use for our heavier fabrication. If you walk around and watch yourself on this plate. For the seat back here, the shiny edge down here, that's the bottom blade. And then up here is the top blade. This whole arm comes down and cuts anything that's hanging out on the other side of that. And what helps us make this so precise is we have a bar here called a backstop. And this is controlled uh, like the CNC, computer numerical control. So what we can do with that is, is we can set this backstop and it will move automatically to within a thousandth of an inch of what we want to cut. So all we have to do is slide our materials through so it contacts the surface and cut it, and we'll know we're going to be very, very accurate. All right. Over, so if you pan to your right. This tool here is what we refer to as a metal break. So the roll over there, rolled material into shapes. This bends materials into shapes. Do you see we have an upper die, or, or sorry, punched, and a, a lower die? The material goes through there, this arm comes down and bends the material to a specific angle. Yeah, thanks, Pete. So here's an example. This was not anything we're going to use to fabricate with. This is just we were calibrating the machine for something. But this started out flat, and you see how we can bend that. And we can adjust this machine and very precisely bend whatever angle it is we want to bend. So it can be very precise. Perfect. Yes. So, how long can you? How long does it take to go through the process of classes before you get to use this particular this, machine? This is at the very end of the program. So, um, after we're done with pipe welding, we get into our fabrication and our capstone course, the very last pro, uh, classes in our program. That's where students use all of this equipment out here. Yeah, very good question. All right. And then I have a couple more things to show you. All right, this over here, this is a plasma cutter. Um, up in our prep room, I showed you a small version of a handheld plasma cutter. This is what I refer to as a CNC plasma cutter. So this, this uses that plasma to cut metal with. However, this is computer controlled. So we do our designing in the computer in advance and then send it to this machine and it cuts out parts for us. This machine has the capability to cut out flat parts or also round parts over here, this machine will turn this tubing and bring the plasma cutter over and cut out various shapes and parts. So you can see some of the stuff we've been cutting in. Very precise, accurate parts. Uh, 
Yes, two pedal pieces. Basically, stuff that we can't use, drops and so forth, or revenants. Um, if there's any use left in it for anything, if we think we might need it or can make use of it somehow, we'll usually store it. But parts or uh, metal drops that have no use anymore, um, that gets recycled. We have big recycle bins, and that metal gets picked up, recycled, and it comes back to our program. Basically, we get we get money from recycling, and it goes back into our program to buy more materials. But the great thing about metals is there's really no waste. All of our metals can be recycled and used over again. So there you go. All right. And then I do have an example over here of a fire pit. Um, as I'm describing these projects, you may not get a good idea of what I was talking about, but we actually have a fire pit right here. So in our fabrication class, this is what students would create. Okay, and this would be theirs at the end. And they're gonna use a lot, most of this various equipment here that I just showed you to help shape and form and create the pieces and parts for this, okay? So this is our lid. That'll lift right up off of there. And you can see inside, there's our grate for the wood. And then this pan, fire pan can lift right out. So the students have to fabricate and weld this whole thing together. And that's their project for that class, for our fabrication class. And they take a lot of pride in this too, because this is something that they get to keep and take home and show off and they'll always have. So the idea is not just to make it, but to do really high quality. All right, very good. Um, I don't have a pressure vessel to show you right now, a fabricated one, but here's a picture of our prints for it. That is what the pressure vessel looks like. The students have to fabricate that entire piece. They use a variety of welding processes and cutting process to fabricate it. They have to cut, fit, and shape both plate, flat elements, as well as all these round elements, pipe fit everything, weld it all together. And then again, we fill this up with water and test it up to a thousand pounds per square inch as the final project in the program. This is the very last thing that students complete. Thank you, Pete. Appreciate that. Okay, uh, that's a tour of our shop. So I, uh, I guess we'll go back to the classroom now. All right, very good. So I guess uh, we'll finish out with what questions you have, but. I know you just have some standardized questions as well as maybe some questions from students watching. Have we had any questions come through? Mm -hmm. Okay, so one question um, that I would have for you. I know you said that you've worked in the welding industry prior to being an instructor. Correct. So what could you, what sort of advice would you give to students who are interested in welding as a career? Um, maybe what are some struggles that you faced or you know people face when going through welding? That kind of thing. Okay, very good. So, um, well, I've been welding quite a while. Um, I've been with the college 26 years. Um, and prior to that, I had about almost 10 years of experience in the field. Um, when I was in high school, I was really interested in mechanics and cars and still am, you know, still love cars and those kinds of things. Um, and so I started down that path first. Now, I, I did a little bit of welding in high school, um, but not a lot. I was more mechanically orientated. And then after high school, I went to school for mechanics. And in my case, I ended up going to school for like diesel mechanics and heavy equipment mechanics. And when I really got into that field, welding was a huge part of that, especially on the heavy equipment side. Automotive, there's some, but on heavy equipment, things are wearing out, breaking, getting wrecked, that kinds of stuff, and lots and lots of weld repair. And once I got into welding in that field, um, I just found out how much I really loved welding. Um, 
I liked it even more than the mechanics. So most of my career before becoming a teacher, though, I was an industrial welder slash mechanic. So I did a lot of heavy mechanic on bulldozers, loaders, excavators, uh, heavy stationary equipment like rock crushers and metal shredders. So um, mechanics and welding really work together. Sort of like I was saying earlier, that this skill set as a welder can enhance other things. So I was sort of a combination person, if you will. I did. I had other duties as well. But what really, I guess, uh, got me both into mechanics and welding is using my hands. I love to create, fix, solve problems, those kinds of things. And this is just the way that I'm able to really express myself. Um, and it's, it, the field has been very good to me. I will say that. I've always enjoyed it. So if you're a hands-on person, if you like that kind of thing, the welding field is so broad and diverse that depending on what your personal interests are, there's a portion of the welding field, I think, that can apply to what you like, whether it's art, whether it's just fabrication, whether you like to repair and fix things. So I think that's what makes it great is there's something in welding really for everybody to suit everybody's interests. As far as breaking into the field and some of the struggles I faced, um, just like anything, I think when you start something new, when you're brand new to it and you don't have much experience, it can be pretty daunting. And uh, the welding field is, is um, you work a lot of hours, you know, you're in a lot of different situations. So you experience a lot of new things up front that you're not used to. I would say that um, preparing, trying to be prepared in advance with a good education, a solid core, like we talked about, like in the math reading skills is important in our field, right? And then safety. When you get into a field like this, you need to make sure you understand safety. It can be very hazardous. And when you're new, there's many challenges um, and you're relying on people that you work with too to help guide you through this process. But I can't stress how important how important safety is and knowing the safety up front because as you're as you're breaking into this field, depending on what and you can face all kinds of different hazards, not just welding, but almost any kind of industrial hazards. Um, and other, other than that, I think, again, just being new when you're young and you haven't had a lot of experience, anything that you're going to start out with, anything you're going to try, it's going to be daunting. It's going to be hard. You're going to have some hard days and um, experience is different than education. So you can have an education in welding or you can go to school for mechanics. It doesn't really make you a welder or a mechanic yet. It's That's a great foundation. But experience on the job is what really combines with the education that you receive to, I guess, become a welder, become a great mechanic, or whatever trade it is that you choose. So I, I, you know, I thought maybe when I first got out of school that I really knew everything about what I was doing and experience uh, quickly taught me that I had a lot to learn. And so it was several years in the field, really working hard and building that experience before I felt like I was really a good all around welder. So. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Paul, can you tell me your favorite welding project you've done thus far? My favorite welding project. Um, let me think, because I've done a lot. Give me just a second. Let me think about this. <laughs> go through. Yeah. Um, I once did a project. It was... Um, uh, I worked for a company that, that did a lot of repair on heavy equipment. Um, and what we were working on in this particular project was a large metal shredder. So this is like a four-story piece of equipment. And what it does is it, it shreds metal. It's for scrap and recycling. So there's a big conveyor belt that feeds this material, or the, the, the metal into it. And there's big hammers that are swinging around and they just basically break the pieces up into little parts. Um, we needed to completely refit this whole thing. So it was like a three or four month project. We had to completely dismantle it, cut it all apart, and basically rebuild it from the ground up. And I really, really enjoyed that um, because I just learned so much. I mean, we, we, had to, we had to take it down and then start from scratch and build it back up. And in that four month period, I just, and I was younger at the time, I was newer in the field when I did that. So to me, that was just, I, know, I learned so much on that project and grew so much on that project. And then, and then other than that, personally, um, I, I like classic cars and I've had several. And so um, not for a job or anything, but um, I've done a lot of body work and restoration on cars, which I found very, very uh, gratifying. So um, I, when you when you have to repair or make your own patch panels and repair sheet metal on an old car, and then when it gets painted uh, and you finish out the metal work, you never knew the repair was there. To me, and, and it's such detailed work as well. Um, to get it to that level, 
that I really enjoy that. I'm a very detail oriented person. So when I get to do those types of things and really think and solve problems, that makes me very happy. But the various car projects I've done are probably the other highlights for me personally. How is integrity as a skill important in a welding career? Uh, integrity is absolutely critical, right? So trust, integrity and trust. I, no matter what you do in life, it could be welding, it could be anything. It's all about working with other people. You will not be, you could be the best welder ever, but if you cannot work with other people, you're not going to get very far in this field or any field. And the, and really the foundation of being able to work with other people is trust. So if you have if, if integrity is important to that trust, once you lose trust, it takes a long time. Well, first of all, it takes a long time to build trust, but once you lose trust, you never really gain it back. And so as you're working with various people, integrity is paramount. Thank yeah. you. And um, I think that there's such a thing as a welding apprenticeship, correct? There can be, yes. Like we don't actually have apprenticeships here, for example, but usually apprenticeships come through um, like typically unions. So, and the unions are great opportunities for students too. Um, now, unions, when you go through an apprenticeship with a union, and it could be, well, there's not like a welding union. Welding fits into like boiler making. Um, pipe, the pipe fitters, uh, iron work, so like steel buildings, right? Like, so welding is in all of those. If you join those unions and you go through their apprenticeship, you get accepted and go through their apprenticeship, that's usually like a four or five year commitment. And you work in the field through the union and you also get schooled or schooling from the union as well. And typically at no cost, except for the fact that you have a commitment to them and you have to fulfill that time commitment or else there's probably significant costs associated with that. But that's a traditional apprenticeship would be through the union. Um, and then sometimes educational programs like ours will form apprenticeships with companies, individual companies where students will attend school and then also be able to work at the company at the same time. And the company and the school are working together to make sure the students gets a well-rounded education. And, and, uh, and, and so that's really just an agreement between the school and the, and the particular business. But a union one is more broad ranging. And I would highly recommend to students, I think an education community college is very important or for whatever trade you'd want to do, but also looking at opportunities to join apprenticeships, um, either before should you choose it or after you, you get an education here at a community college. It could work both ways. But I think as far as really good paying jobs, um, unions are sort of at the top of the list. And they also have great benefits, retirement, the, the medical, the health that goes along with that career. It's, it's pretty outstanding. So I think students should definitely at least consider looking at unions as an opportunity. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, I think we're ready to wrap up. Thank you, Paul, so much for this wonderful tour. It was very informative and interesting. All right, and thank you. Um, I'm glad you were able to visit today. And if there's ever any questions, um, you any of you students out there, watching and listening to this, feel free to contact us. Um, you have my contact information, right? I do. So I'm, I'm sure that will be shared out with you. Feel free to contact me if you're interested in the tour or discuss this more. Be happy to work with you on anything. So thank you very much for your time.